Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, Monday the 30th of November, November 2020, time to time has just gone 10, 10, 13 GMT and it's been a very quiet week to the trading session so far. Um, keep in mind last week uh, and the kind of first in the first half of the week was quite exciting. Uh, we had some more progress on the possibility of a COVID-19 vaccine. This time round, it came from AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford. That helped Eurozone. Here some European stock markets rally to multi-month highs. Uh, over in the US, we, we, we saw um, the Russell 2000, the, the small cap index, go to an all-time high. Bullish move, by and large, for US stocks as well. Um, so the kind of sentiment was quite positive across the board. Um, we also saw a decent move to the upside in the oil market, so, and we had a sell-off in gold. So things were kind of fairly risk on last week. And given that last Thursday was Thanksgiving, the US market was closed. Uh, it was very quiet in Europe. Uh, on Friday, um, the American US stock market was open for only a half day, so things are pretty quiet. So the last couple of days, the, the last two days of last week was pretty quiet. Given that, <clears throat> um, given that we've had kind of no major news over the last few of the over the weekend, really things are, seem to be a bit, a bit quiet today in the European trading on the trading front, and it seems to me that we could be in for a period of low volatility, provided there isn't another kind of big move in either direction in relation to the health crisis, because a lot of progress has been made. There's a general feeling in the markets that the kind of a, a corner has been turned with regards to tackling the health crisis. But at the same time, uh, anytime we do get positive news, um, it ha the, up the move to the upside is getting kind of, kind, of, kind of getting smaller and smaller. In that there seems to be kind of you know, no pun intended, traders are somewhat immune to, to the good news, unless we have you know absolute confirmation that that a, a drug is heading for um, authorization. Um, and then a kind of widespread rollout and, and distribution. Um, unless we get out of that, or else actually sat in our derailment of, the, of the, the likelihood of getting a vaccination, we're probably not going to see colossal moves in either direction. Also in the mix has been uh, U.S. politics. It's seeming, more, it's seeming more likely that President Trump is kind of resigned to the, to the fact that he lost the election. He hasn't officially conceded, but he has said if the Electoral College we're holding their meeting in the middle of next month. If they recognise Biden's win, he will he he will he will, he will accept the result. Um, with that, um, it's so it's, it seems that they we're having some sort of political stability in the U.S. Uh, with that, that's also um, adding to sentiment. Now, as I do, as I do with my, all the all my uh, weekly market update videos, I'll start off with the week ahead article, which can be found on our website cmcmarkets.com under insights, latest news and analysis. Um, so as of this morning, we had some, some consumer credit numbers out from the um, from from the from the UK. Um, third quarter Zoom numbers are coming out tonight after the close. That's, this is very much going to be in focus, given that I think kind of the phenomenal rise that Zoom have experienced um, in the last few months on the back of the on, on the back of the pandemic. So their kind of guidance is going to be very much uh, important because, like I said, it, they're one of the companies which benefited greatly. From the lockdowns, but also they came they, they came off uh, quite aggressively because the, the, the kind of signs that the, the, the days of working from home could be could be coming to an end. Uh, tomorrow uh, we have the US ISM. Uh, we also have European uh, manufacturing updates. Um, Tuesday also we have Salesforce third quarter numbers. Keep an eye out for the cloud component of their business. Snowflake and it's in a similar vein again in relation to data storage. Uh, they have third quarter numbers coming out uh, on Tuesday. On Wednesday we have the uh, service PR reports from the major countries around the world. On Thursday we have a first quarter update from Go Ahead the tra travel crowd. Uh, on Friday we have the all important US non-farm payrolls payroll support and unemployment figure. So that's going to be uh, by far the biggest um, update of the week. Um, going on to now, uh, starting off with the major indices, I take a look at the FTSE 100. So we can see here that we saw the FTSE last um, last week hit a, in a multi-month high uh, in, in um, in, in, um, in, in, in last week. It was the highest level, I believe, uh, since June. So we're talking, you know, uh, about five-month highs were reached. 
We've been an aggressive upward move throughout the month of November because we had a number of drug companies coming out saying they'd make good they'd progress in relation to a COVID-19 vaccine. So the, the upper trend is still very much in play. If it continues to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, the highs of early June in a 6,513. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at up heading towards 6,600. Uh, and then if we go beyond that, we could then be, you know, the next kind of really big number up further on the, on the line will be 7,000. Uh, any move to the downside could find some support from in around this zone here in around 6,258. Move below that, you saw a bit of consolidation in around the kind of 6,200 mark itself. And it's only really, if we have a fairly sizable pullback, can we look to head potentially back down toward this red line here, the 200 day moving average. And that comes into play at 6,048. Notice how that metric acted nicely as support uh, back in you know, early ish November. So if it acted as support in the past, it may and may be of importance in the future. And this sort of pattern here is fairly common across the big indices, which we're all looking at, whereby there's a jolt higher between November and then it will not just better achieve multi-month highs or multi-year highs for the US markets. And it's trading in a relatively small range. So, keep, so you will notice a similarity in price pattern across the major indices. That was the FTSE 100. Turning our attention now to what's going on over Germany, the DAX. Similar scenario here, some late October, been in a strong upward trend. Uh, Multi-month highs were, 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 were set. We're, we're, we're very recently got back to levels last seen um, in, in August. So we're not too far away from, and, and, the, and the levels that were achieved in August were the highest levels achieved since February. So we're not too far away from, you know, if, if you, we're not too far away from being back up towards levels last seen in February. So if we do press on higher from here, um, we could be looking at retesting the highs of September. Let's knock this off. We could be looking at retesting the highs of September in around this area here. Um, which come into play. Highs of September um, in a 13,462. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading back up towards 13,800. We could then be looking at heading up the levels last seen um, in late February in around in around um, 13,800 there thereabouts. And keep in mind the highs that we saw in February were actually all-time highs. Uh, so the DAX was at a, basically at a record high just before the pandemic kicked in. Similar scenario here. If you do drift on lower from here, this just south, just north of 13,200 could act as support. And if you have a, if you have a decent break below that. It could take us back down toward this area here at 13,033. So this general area could act as support. And even if we go below that, we could then be heading back down toward this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. You know, we can see in a few occasions that it acted nicely as support and, and also resistance uh, in, in recent months. So keep an eye out for that. And that comes into play um, at, turn on, these settings back on again. Uh, that 50 moving average comes to play at 12,500, sorry, 12,758. Take a look now what's going on over in, over in the US. So the DAX, so the DAX, the Dow rather, um, set an all-time high last week. Um, we had records uh, posted last week in the US on the back of optimism in relation to the COVID-19 crisis. So we're still very much um, in the upward trend. What is a bit concerning though, because um, let's, be, let's be clear about this, price is by far the most important indicator, but you know, so we're solidly in upward trend. We reach, we're not too far away from the record highs that were, that were set, but if you look down here, the MACD histogram, MACD indicator, we can see it tapering off in positive momentum. So price is put, you know, the price is still in, 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 in quite decent shape, but the tapering off of the positive momentum could be a sign that they're kind of bulls running out of steam. So we might see a bit of a pullback in the near term. And let's face it, if you take a look at the price action in the last few weeks and months, you know, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy. Um, so if, we do continue, if the price continues to press on higher from here, a retaking of 30,000 and it could, could, could put, us on put us back on track to kind of retest the recent all-time highs. And then, of course, you know, the further we go beyond that, you know, the further we set up new all-time highs, more likely we are to continue to be setting all-time highs. 
Um, but if you do see a move to the downside, we could be look, if we're looking at filing support to come into place in this zone here. It's a few occasions at the beginning of, of, of uh, the first week or two of November with this general zone here in around 28,868. Uh, there, they're about acted as support. And even if we go below that, we could see support coming into play from this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average in at 28,352. And we can see here on a few occasions that metric acted nicely as a support in the past. So therefore, it could be act as a support uh, again in the future. Take a look now at what's going over on the S&P 500. Similar scenario. Now, to be fair, the S&P 500 didn't be kind of hidden another all-time high uh, last week because it set it set one at the beginning of the month, um, but it hasn't gotten back up to there yet again. But we're still not too far away from it. So similar scenario, like we saw on the FTSE 100, like we saw on the DAX, like we saw on the Dow Jones. Very aggressive upward move from late October, early November uh, throughout the month. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent, you know, the the all-time high that was achieved at the beginning of the month at um, three thousand six hundred and seventy-four. And if you go beyond that, you know, the next kind of big level to keep an eye for will be three thousand seven hundred. Uh, if you do have a bit of a drift to the downside, support could come into play from around three thousand six hundred. And if you have a fairly sizable pullback. Uh, support could come into play in this area here in around 3,511. And then if we go below that, you know, we, we could be looking at it back. once again, the 50-day moving average, which on a few occasions acted with both a support, but also as kind of a kind of consolidation zone. So this blue line here on a few occasions acted nicely as support. So keep an eye out for that level there and at 3,454. Uh, so could act as a support again, should we see a fairly decent move to the downside, but even if we do have a move that far low, given how much how much, how much ground it's travelled from late October onwards, the upward trend would still be intact. So it's only really if kind of a sizable break below the 100 day moving average, could then you begin to think, okay, maybe maybe we could be looking at you know a quite question the kind of the broader upward trend. Turning our attention now to what's going on on the currency markets, starting off with euro dollar. Zero dollar isn't too far away. The highs that were, were, the highs of today's session haven't been that far away from the highs that were achieved in September, which was the highest level since August, sorry, since April 2018. So we're not too far away from multi-year highs being set. As you can see here, the price action in a kind of strong upward trend in the last few weeks. We're not too far away from basically setting fresh new multi-year highs. If we press on higher from here and we take off the 120 area. We could then be looking at heading back up towards this zone here. This area here in around one spot, 2140, a level last seen, well, in late April um, 2018. Um, so these, these are the metrics we need to keep an eye out for. Sorry, I, a moment ago I said the recent highs that were set on Euro dollar were the highest levels seen since April 2018. I was actually mistaken, that was incorrect. The highs that were seen recently were the highest levels seen um, since May 2018. But if you take off the 120 mark, we could then be looking at retesting one spot 2140, and those were levels last seen in April 2018. Keeping and turning our attention back now to the kind of downside prices, we've been in a strong upper trend the last few weeks. So if we do move on, have a bit of a pullback. We could see support coming into play from this zone here in our kind of 118, which is also not too far away from this blue line, the 50-day moving average. Um, and that comes into play in at 1 to spot 1784. And once again, in a similar scenario, on a few occasions, you know, that, that metric has acted nicely as, as support on a number of occasions. So keep an eye on, on that area should we have a move to the downside. Coming on now to pound versus the US dollar. Uh, once again, Brexit, well, the UK has already left the European Union, but trade talks between the UK and the EU to decide the future relationship between the two um, come January 2021 are still ongoing. Um, over the weekend, um, 
Dominic Raab of the UK government, say that he believes progress will be made on fishing, which is one of the kind of big sticking points, but the, and his, his basis comes from the fact that progress has been made in other areas of the negotiation. So it's, it seems that progress is slowly and maturely being made. But even if you kind of ignore the headlines, the price action in Sterling shows you that people aren't, traders aren't, are reasonably confident that some sort of deal will be achieved, or else they believe that a deal will be achieved at, at, at some point. You know, if you take a look at the price action, uh, it wouldn't suggest that, we, that, that traders are particularly nervous about the, poss the prospect of a no-deal scenario come early 2021. So if we take a look at the price action here, it's been a nice upward trend basically since late September. The highest that we saw very recently were the highest seen uh, since early September. So we're talking multi-month highs have been set. If it, we're currently in at one spot, 33.24. If you continue to press on higher from here, I mean, if we have a break above one spot, 34, it could take us up, up towards the highs of all highs of September. And if, or even if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards one spot, 35.15, a level that was last seen in December 2019 on the kind of in the immediate reaction to the Conservatives uh, here in the UK winning winning a massive majority at the general election. Uh, if you do drift lower on uh, on pound dollar from here, support could, be, could come into play in around one spot 32. And even if you go below that, because I'm like heading down towards this zone here in at one spot 31.06. And if you go below that, 130 itself um, would kind of you know be a, a big psychological number for the currency pair. Lastly, coming out to your commodities, uh, start off with the gold market. Gold has had a fairly poor run recently. Part of the reason why gold is at a poor run <clears throat> is, um, is essentially the risk-on attitude of traders. You know, it's, not, it's no coincidence that gold, which is traditionally does well in stocks, are, are underperforming. Um, while we see multi-month highs in, in Eurozone stock markets or all-time highs in sub-US stocks, we're seeing gold t t take a tumble. Um, on Friday, it closed below its 200 moving average for the first time since March of this year, so that, that's very significant. Um, and if we're currently trading in at 17.73 in gold, if we continue to kind of press on lower from here on gold, we could be looking back down toward this zone here, down around 17.47. And then if you go below that, we could then be looking at back heading down towards 1700 itself. Now, uh, if we do see a bit of a rebound in gold, we could be looking heading back up towards the recent highs in at 18.18. And if you go beyond that, excuse me, apologies, if you go beyond 1818, we could then be looking at heading up towards this zone here in around 1848, 1850. And keep in mind, that was the kind of the big kind of key previous area of fairly important support. And then once that was broken, that's what really kind of set the kind of sell off in motion. So that area, which was previously acted as very decent support, could act as resistance. Uh, should we see a rally from here? And lastly, I come on to Brent crude oil. Brent crude oil, uh, the cash contract, uh, oil had a very positive run recently. Combination of optimism in relation to the vaccines. Also, there's been increased chatter that OPEC Plus, who are making their output decision today, there's been increased chatter and talk that instead of increasing supply come January as they originally planned to do, there's been, originally, there's been a lot of speculation that they're going to maintain their, their existing fairly steep production cuts, keep those in place as a way of keeping the price up. Um, there was there was division. Uh, um, UAE and Kazakhstan yesterday and expressed their desire to go ahead with the increased supply, whereas Russia and a number of others in, uh, are keen to maintain the current uh, current output regime. Uh, so that decision is going to be in focus. That meeting is going to be made. The decision will be made today. Um, but if you take a look at the price action, yeah, you know, what can argue there's a bit of profit taking going on. There's some people thinking we've had a great run between early no from early November uh, until until late no late November when the market hit its highest level since March. Takes some, you know, we can see a bit of a drift lower, but you know, there isn't that much fear that you know we're going to have an aggressive sell off in the oil market. So the upward trend is still very much in place. Um, we're currently trading in around kind of $47.20. If we continue to press on higher from here, 50 bucks a barrel is kind of the next big kind of psychological level to keep an eye out for. Should we drift lower from here? 
support could come into play in around the 46 area. Notice how we saw a bit of consolidation at 46 there, and on a few occasions it acted as resistance in late August. So keep an eye for 46. And even if you go below that, we have a pretty decent uh, move at the downside. Support could come into play from those, this yellow line here, the one really moving average. Notice how it acted nicely as support <coughs> um, in the middle of November. So keep an eye out for 42 spot 19. Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good training week and good luck.